The following presentation is by Rene Madel of Framus on Moulding the Future, Computational Design in Footwear Tooling. Hey, hello, good morning everyone. Thank you for the invitation, thank you the one for the organization. Thank you all for coming, it's good to see you again. Molding the future, it's about um, how we are using computational design for footwear tooling, specifically. I will do a Framas introduction. Framas is the company that I work for. Uh, and then I will go deeper into the shank and some other interesting things about combining hybrid uh, or combining traditional technology in this hybrid system CNC and additive manufacturing, and how we are using it for mold optimization and fabrication. So Framas is a German company. Um, our headquarters is in Pirmasens, a very small town. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. <laughs> but we have uh, many locations around the world. Uh, mass production is happening mostly in Asia. We also have offices in the US. Um, since 75 years, we are working with these startups. Um, <laughs> some of you are our customers. So, and we do basically plastic components for the footwear industry, mostly for high performance, but we do all kinds of things for the footwear industry. We don't make the full shoe, so don't ask me for samples of the full shoe. You can see some samples on the table uh, about some parts. Parts like a shank. This is a shank. Traditionally, it's a part which is uh, used as a reinforcement uh, to give some support on your feet. It could be a wooden shank, it could be a leather shank or metallic. And it's functional. It's, it's started with the uh, horse riding boots, but uh, nowadays it's still used for giving support to the art support. Uh, to the arch of your feet. And this is not a shank. This is also not a building. <laughs> I mean, it could be, but it's not. So it's a nice structure. It's ADMS. Then I will show you more about this. But we use it for to make a real shank. So as you can see here, then you can you can watch you can see this on the on the table. This is the, the shank uh, we're using for co-molding uh, with our traditional materials. I will go back to that later. But first I want to say that this is coming from your human body. So it's about taking your anatomy and using the technology to improve how we do footwear. So how may, shoes are made using technology at that time was, I put this because it was a Dutch guy uh, who invented this lasting machine. And talking about lasting, what we need to start is the last, the shoe last. I showed this uh, last year in Berlin, but I, I'm showing it again just to tell you that now we're not uh, thinking about the inside of the last, but talking about the, or thinking about the, the outside as an structure. So the minimal surfacing for lattices, uh, now we're using it not only for the product itself or the last, but for the mold. So as you can see on the table, which is uh, orange shoe last, this was made last week uh, using this mold. I'm not saying now shoe last should be foamy or, um, but it's lighter, it's foamy, it's flexible. It has many advantages compared to the traditional way of shoe last making that maybe you, you know. The cool thing is about 3MF. <laughs> uh, I know I have a bonus to mention <laughs> 3MF. And it's amazing <clears throat> what we can do regarding the file optimization. Now the files are uh, amazingly light. So it, the full project is uh, below 10 megabytes or 8 megabytes. It's amazing to create all these structures. But when I began uh, researching on this, uh, I was using much more volume. So printing more powder or material, uh, using more energy. 
and that's not the way. So I started reducing the model by manual optimization, but trying to do it more conformal because molding uh, or tooling in mold making is really coming from a big block and reducing it uh, by subtracting material. But now we have additive manufacturing. Therefore, we should think the other way around, starting from the object or the geometry and make the mold around. But at that point, I, I didn't succeed that much because this structure was more than 1.5 gigabytes. So that was really not so easy to handle. But it was good to prove that we can do overcasting using 3D printed parts with uh, foam casting in a functional part. This is for safety shoes. So we integrated the toe cap, uh, the ray foam <coughs> midsole. So lightweight and strong, and now using metal additive manufacturing, the depowdering is more simple. Sometimes it's, it would be a nightmare to do the depowdering. But another cool feature about uh, adaptive density, minimal surfacing, is uh, you have this dual domain, so you can use it for cooling, for example. Cooling is a big topic for us in injection molding, because every cycle you need to cool it down. And maybe it's a couple of seconds, but if you consider we're talking about million of pairs, every second counts. And now the plan, I'm, I'm not showing this, maybe next year, but uh, the plan is to use the ADMS not only for light waving, like weight saving, uh, but also for cooling, cooling channels. Because traditionally the mold making is like this, a lot of, as I said, metal blocks, 200, 400 kilos of aluminum or steel, and a lot of parts, everything is CNC mills or lathe. Uh, so it's always subtractive. Uh, the complexity here, for all the mechanisms and everything is really, yeah, it's a hard thing to do. <laughs> uh, but at the end, uh, you have some parts that now we can do uh, in a different way. And these are the cooling channel. The traditionally are really orthogonal, but now with the lattice uh, structure, we could do them more, even more adaptive or conformal. Just to have a reference, if we do, if we use CNC milling, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy. Uh, kilowatt hours running for weeks, uh, our CNC machines, it takes a lot of kilowatts. So it's a lot of energy uh, and using any kind of uh, 3D printing or uh, additive manufacturing, we will reduce not only the material consumption, but also the energy consumption. That's why uh, we are taking, for example, a texturing using laser to not reveal the full mold, but just to scratch the surface, because we are talking about uh, molds, hundreds of molds that they are being disposed. So to avoid that, we need to do some upcycling. <coughs> And engraving, it could be laser or just uh, printing some inserts or parts to replace this. So for doing that, we're doing uh, this texturing, obviously in the digital way. So for not only for laser texturing, but also for 3D printing. So in this case, Boccia is for footwear, footwear design integrated with uh, Grasshopper. We can do really good. Uh, wrapping using the UV qualities of Rhino. Uh, again, light weighting. I, I really enjoy uh, not only the lightweight of this, by the way, this is just 3MF <coughs> drag and drop into the PowerPoint and it's running smoothly uh, because s ray is working very well on the meshing. So these meshes are even draft quality, not high, high quality, but good enough not only for showing you, but also for printing. So the 3MF file, the full midsole we are casting today or tomorrow in Germany, we're using this new mold construction. 
So it's all about um, the strings inside. Uh, everything is only six parts. And Magix is taking everything uh, completely. Here you can see the slicing. Inside will be the, the midsole, the foam. So we are doing the foam casting inside. It's just pouring, so it's an open mode that we close it. It's very simple. But it's a pleasure to have some <laughs> light uh, files. Mm -hmm. So we used this um, last year uh, to show in the Desma Fair. Again, to prove this uh, part, in this case, the shank, you know, is uh, in between. So we do overcasting. So the injected also, as you can see also on the table, uh, we injected traditionally with traditional mold, molds coming from Vietnam. Now we have them in Germany, and we did everything uh, for the co-molding. So co-molding injected TPU uh, with 3D printed TPU uh, using this liquid TPU. So everything is the same family. So for recycling, that will be uh, perfect because we can spread all everything together. And the exploration started. Uh, different shapes, combining the shank with the heel um, reinforcement. It's a heel part that um, as beams, uh, beam latticing was not that good. So then we decided to go with um, ADMS. Because even we need to support them with some pins in, inside the mold to hold them in place. So you cannot even see the pin holders because it's hidden on the Lattice structure. So this is the, the shank. Um, it's not a big deal, but now we're doing it in a very different way. It's not wooden, it's not a uh, metal part. And we successfully uh, implemented everything together. But before uh, running the printing part, we did some simulation with intact inside Grasshopper. I'm not a FEA expert or analysis geek. So, but even I can do this uh, simulation. Uh, it's really simple with just a grasshopper definition given by <laughs> um, intact solutions. Um, and you can load different materials and simulate what are the loads on different parts. So you can see how this is bending. This is just a very simple stress analysis, nothing fancy, uh, but it's working. And it's working super fast. You can see this is real time. Duan did the fast forward version. Just in one minute, you can see the full process. Uh, but this is a real time uh, for someone who is not an expert. It's really easy to work with. So we showed this uh, last year in New York, in Brooklyn. Uh, I was really happy to, to share this with the Sharing guys. Um, and as I said, this was a collaboration between Germany, our colleagues in Hong Kong, in China, in Vietnam. So, part of the group, we were all working on this. Um, now we have the most in, in Germany. And this year we did a modification. And you know, in footwear industry, modifications are our daily business. <laughs> So customers usually come with some, oh, can you do this modification? Of course we can do, but this is internal modifications because now we want to, to modify instead of direct soling, uh, we wanted to adapt this to make it um, for cementing, for gluing. So I did the product modification. Uh, we succeed doing, the, doing this uh, for our Sutoria workshop in Portland uh, using Balina. You can see the test, you can smell it. This is a cinnamon smell. And Balina is this uh, bio series called the material. It's very similar to TPU, it's not high performance, but we can inject it as well. And again, co molding uh, directly with the 3D printed part, the injected part, everything foam. But now these white parts are 3D printed. It's, it's an aluminum mold, but combined with uh, additive manufacturing. This is the hybrid system I was talking about and everything with uh, liquid TPU, we can have this uh, final result. And we shipped this to Portland. And the people there was really happy to 
were with this bottom unit and they did the, the uppers and the cementing. So at the end, the mold modification was super accurate, super uh, easy to do. Sadly, we did this with the um, honeycombs. <laughs> so it's lighter, but you know, honeycombs is only one direction, so it's not isotropic. But then uh, I went uh, for more research doing the, um, not only honeycomb, but also TPMS. So TPMS is also fine, but ADMS is better. <laughs> um, so with a ADMS, we can really, as I said, not only improve the, um, the strength, but also we save a lot of uh, material, energy, etc. And at the end, not because of the mold, but at the end, total, we reduce around 20% the weight. So it's much lighter. And everyone was really happy in Portland. So they worked on this. We provided the last and the bottom units and they did uh, the rest, the rest with our Sotoria mentorship. So the last thing is a project, a uh, food loop that we showed in Milan. Uh, this year, uh, together with Moon Rabbit and Balena, Jesus is there, so you can talk to him. Um, we did this very interesting project, which is a concept about circularity in footwear. So how can we inject some materials that those are composable? So at the end, you can really uh, disassemble the shoe and compose it. So the at the end of life, the user is responsible to do the afterlife <laughs> cycle and recycle this, but it's not real recycling, it's downcycling and it's basically composting. Because you know, recycling in footwear is not working, only 5% of the shoes are being recycled. So it's, that's not the way. For doing that, I, also, I was also exploring some super simple ways to do the flaps for bonding and everything. The project was super cool. Again, this was uh, to show the concept. We're not there ready with the full development to, to have a final solution, but we had a lot of fun. <laughs> so, and, and, and we were talking about this. This is important for the industry because uh, some brands are now looking uh, the circularity, like, like the real way uh, to go. And last year I also finished with this one, but now I think not, we are not only kids drawing shows, shoes, sorry. But after the foot loop, I saw so many kids so interested in what we were doing. And now I, I really positive, positively think that the new generations are thinking not only about drawing, but 3D printing and doing much more and better designs. So thank you. Uh, this is my last jump. <laughs> to learn more about the CDFAM Computational Design Symposium series, to see the archives of previous presentations, and to learn about future events, visit cdfam.com.